time I do this, my practice is I use strike, but it, strike or hit is what? One. Till we want to do what? Drive. And then we drive until stop, right? And we try to get that practice all the time because it's easy to do it here and it might even seem trivial when we're 10 o'clock in the morning. It's pretty quiet out. You guys have only been through one station. Okay, I'm pretty sure you're not gonna hit me in the shoulder. I'm confident in that aspect, but if we run it at midnight, and we're how many calls in, and we have a little bit less visibility, or I've never worked with you, all that stuff is, is an opportunity for errors to occur. Whereas if we're clear, we eliminate a lot of that. So if we go to a call, to, if I hang out with you tonight and we go on a call, and I'm on the bar, it's gonna be hit, and you know, and it's one shot, drive, stop. We're gonna use all the same commands and be clear with it anytime we do it. And that just builds that. It builds the trust, but it, it translates to any time you do it and anywhere you may be, no matter what the situation is. This, this is a tone set, right? Getting in the door is important, but if this starts to get sideways, usually what happens to the next thing? Yeah, and then what happens after that? It's all, so it's, it does kind of affect the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. So the hoses, forcible entry, throwing ladders, that's the stuff we want to be basic skills. But that's the stuff we want to be really efficient at so the next moves are right so if you see something like this and i'm not talking about the construction of it but if you see that height of a seam you the, for the bars purposes it's probably going to be the ads right and then if it's not you may have to go with the tips of the fork but pay attention to the the angle you're working on so if you go if you decide you're going to start with the ads to get your initial remember that if you're if you're to the door that little bit of curve and bevel to the ads is going to take the tip of it away from the door. So this, if you have this room, you may not, but if you have that room, you may have to go about there, right? So you see that angle? Is that different than that? Right? So you'll be able to get into a little bit of a tighter seam with that. Right? How you keep your tools, that's where that could matter too if you have everything filed. This was, was cleaned up, but it'll, it'll take some wear on this. But if you have everything filed and a little bit thinner and sharper and ready to go, it makes a difference. And the tighter the door, it'll make that. All right, what did you have? No, I was just gonna say, do you prefer like the striker to be down and the hugging guy up? Like, I mean, is that how you? So I've, I've gone through all the ways and I used to be always down. If, if I can be, I like to be down. Okay. That's for me. Yes. And my only, my only qualifier for that is However you feel like you could deliver a level strike, because that's where, that's where you're going to get that force, right? So how, if you're, dry, if you're swinging and you're getting more of a glancing blow from standing up, maybe you want to get that. All right? And it'll play in too, and this is the time to kind of work around, work around and mess with some of this stuff. When we talk about that light fire layout thing, that may be something where you're like, oh, maybe I'll try getting down a little bit. Maybe I'll stay up to get over here. If he's going to force this way, and I'm down, can I transition right over? And if, if this door is tough, and I need to get here with you, can I put a hand on So it's just stuff that you, if I feel like I could be better, of better use, maybe I'll, maybe Yeah, because a lot of the time down. whenever I've done two persons, the guy's striking, so he's down, the other guy's up. Yeah, I, li I like to be down in general, but I, I mean, I would say play that with the situation. Okay. But if I'm right. here for that, and he's I'm gonna start there, down. it's gonna be hard to hit. Yeah, I won't be down, yeah. <laughs> right. And then where's our starting point? In, in in our best situation, where's our starting point in relation to the lock? Right below it. Pretty pretty close, or, or right above it. Right. So close. above or below to me doesn't close make a it. difference. Close to it makes a difference. What's going to be the issue there is if the lock is intact and the door doesn't flex, we need to get find that point where we can start. So if this door is tight, what might I want to do? Just put a foot that, on it. Yeah. Is that enough for us to get started? Yes, sir, it is. But can we just drop it in here and that we have to work towards that? So can a foot do that? Can my knee, does that give me a lot? Not a lot, but I'm, not, I'm only looking for a little bit to get started. Does that make sense to you guys? So the, that's where that door flex could work against you. You may be able to start, but you're starting so far away from the lock, above or below, that you're gonna have to work. So you might have to wedge or hold it, ax, wedge, whatever you use. Yep and then work up towards the lock before you're actually going to get the lock and the mechanism to fail. All right? You got it.
Strike. 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 Stop. We're not good. Stop. Yeah. Strike. Strike. So, and this is not. I'm not picking. Okay. Yeah, but this is. This good is could tell time. me to keep going. Or yes. Exactly. Good. Yeah, and, good could be yeah. exactly. Okay. So this is the time. Strike. Oh, get out, get out. Strike. What did you hear to make you stop? You felt it, and you hear the pitch. So if you if you if you feel comfortable with that bar, that's what you can start. That's next level. Sounds good. That's next level. The sounds, the feel of the bar. When that bar stops moving in his hands, I'm I'm into the I'm into the jam. I'm a little bit too far. So that sound goes with the feel. If that thing is still moving in, you're here, right? So what are you doing here? Stationary target and giving him commands. So you can here with visibility, you could see that movement. When that thing, when he gives it that that third strike and it doesn't move again, and I hear. Ping, that high pitch, that's the vibration, and that's telling you that you're in, in, in the jam, right? So it works the same as shock. What's your thoughts on shock and door? What do you think? Do we get a ton out of it? Most of the time, no. Sometimes you can get a feel maybe where the lock is, but that's about it. You get a feel for maybe, that's exactly right. You get a feel for maybe where the lock is, or you get a sound that maybe where your lock and your resistance is, you're going to tend to hear a little bit duller thud. Where there's not resistance, you're going to hear it ring a little bit more. It's going to be a little bit more, and it'll even be nerd, nerding out on forcible entry. But if you, if you, go ahead, I'll get that again. So, and, and I shock, and this is me, but I'll shock more with the forks, because I, I can feel and hear better with that than this, this end that's so blunt. So when I go in, it puts up here, here, I have, there's a little ring to it, right? If it's down here, that's a little bit dull. I mean, it's this door, but on a door with locks, it's a little bit more of a thud. I don't have that vibration in my hand, okay? And I, I do go low. That one I'm almost ready to throw out too because in, I'm, in my 15 years, I haven't seen a lock down there yet. But could there be? Yeah, I don't know. Percentage-wise, I may be wasting my time there, but that the sound and feel, that's what you're looking for there. Could you give a shot right to where the lock may be and move something? You might. Do, is there a payoff to us banging and swinging on the door? If the door is any what decent and has a lock on it, probably not. If it's, if it's about gone already and we give it a shot, that could pay off. But if, but if the door is intact, probably not. All right, you got it. Yep. Strike. Strike. Stop. You feel like you got enough? Look, and here's this is where that residential thing comes in. If we don't have anything super, super rigid here to pry against, that energy doesn't go back to the door. That energy is going to get sucked into that with that piece of trim. So here, use your feel. Start going down, keep that bar where it is and start going down and whatever that door gives you, take it. But don't try to get more than you can. So if you're right, hold that. There, there, that's, you okay? Oh, yeah. That's exactly what'll happen. It'll roll out or you'll lose the trim. All right, so you get that feel where it was, all right, I'm about there, that's action. So when you feel like you're about there, you're either gonna wedge it, so you're gonna communicate. I would communicate that. Yeah, yeah. All right, so go ahead and hold that. You come in, you hold it, I got it. Now you can move it. So when he's, and you got it there. So now what can you do? You could do that, right? So you, if you have daylight, you can go right to the edge and drop it in. If you don't have that much daylight, you want to steer the forks through, that's an option as well. All the way. Here. For your size, I would go a little bit above. Okay. And then use that whole tool. So have you turn it all the way down. Turn it all the way to the door. Go. Down, 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 down. down. You use that up, all right? So he's used all that, right? So he's used, that's two inch wide ads. Why is it two inches? Why is two inches important with the ads? What, how far into the, into the keeper does a residential lock normally go? It's about an inch and a half, inch and three quarters. The ads will beat the inch and a half lock. If the wood is half bent and the string's long, okay, we'll play that. But that full two inches should beat that residential door. Now you have the ability to do what? Fork. Go to the forks 
And when either any side of the tool you work, it's a really good practice to go all the way to the door and use that tool. The 30 inch, the standard 30 inch bar is that is that long because that's your width of most doors. So it allows you to go all the way flush to the door and get the whole curves to work. So in the same concept with the ads, all the way down with the ads is the full two inch spread. All right. So from there you can go a couple ways, but where will give you the most travel? Forks, the forks will give you some. That's not going to give you as much. You can do that with the curve going. I don't say, I don't say the wrong way. The curves you can set the forks either way, depending on what the door gives you. Got the distraction. You can get, you could set the forks either way, depending on what the door allows you to do, and and or space, right? Walls and and anything like that. But you, when you get that set and ready to move you have options this is always going to give you the most travel so if I'm here and this is e even so if there's a wall here if I get set here which way can I go with it right right towards the door right you've gone down you got that the forks probably aren't going to give you because you've gotten that full two inch so if I've already gotten the full spread of the forks outside of butting up butting the axe or doing something to get that leverage greater to add leverage this is probably where we're gonna have to finish it so if you think along the lines of ads forks ads a lot of times that'll get you the, the last one you go ahead and finish it up hey. <laughs> remember <laughs> sticky doors tougher doors the longer the further out on the bar you get the more leverage you're going to have the more mechanical advantage words everywhere i hate to keep using it but the more mechanical advantage you're using with that bar because that lever is stronger out there this hand in here really isn't doing a whole lot especially if the door is tough if you get all the way out on the forks and you move that bar from out there you're going to improve your chances that's why we marry bars. That's why we could use longer bars if, if space allows. That's why some folks like marrying the hook. I'm not a huge fan of it because I'm not that good at it. And I've seen it done smoothly and I've seen it done rough. And if you're good at it, you can make that thing a, a good long lever and it'll work. But it's something that takes some time and feel and practice doing. Cool? Yep, switch them up. Good. Good. And now you can go with it. That makes sense to you guys with using that full spread. If you take the time and do all the work to get the tool set in there, go all the way to the door. And, and especially where I'm at, people get ahead of themselves because there's so many folks rushing that they want to do it too quick and they outpace themselves and they'll turn the ads and they'll get it to about 45 degrees and the door won't go. Hey, hold on, take that one second, flush it all the way to the door. And that's some, a lot of times all you need, especially on a, on a door with a true lock, an inch and a half lock. The two inches will beat that door, right? The full spread of the ads will beat that door, but you got to take the time to go all the way to it.